Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Adobe Live stream by Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be here live streaming to you on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. I hope it's beautiful where you are. It is where I am here in Atlanta. I got a nice sunny day today, so couldn't be happier about that. But it's time to take a look at uh, a business project, a, a tool for individuals. And of course, a tool that can more and more increasingly be used for business. So for those of you who are new, welcome. I uh, hope that you're joining me uh, and having fun here on the live streams. Uh, today I'm streaming on LinkedIn. This is mostly a LinkedIn topic, but I'm also simulcasting to YouTube and to my uh, Twitter via Periscope. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. So I see Steve and, and Bobby, welcome on YouTube. I see some folks lurking over on um, on LinkedIn and hang on, yep, there, there they are. I see the reactions now just popped in. So I see a couple people on LinkedIn, feel free to ask questions along the way. And I'll try and also look at the Twitter chat um, as we get started. All right, so uh, night in Ireland. So I hope it's a good evening there. And uh, Arish is in the house, Jesper, Sharon, Julio, Kevin. Uh, great, great, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. I don't want to spend too much time giving shout outs when we can be spending time learning. All right, I'll switch over to my computer. I've got um, just my web browser open. And Adobe Spark is a platform. So think of it as a set of tools to allow you to create uh, beautiful posts, graphics, web pages, and video stories for your social media. Now, like I said, it, it can certainly be used by individuals, but it can also now be used um, even easier for business. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But let's talk about the three components of Spark. There is... Um, Actually, I can probably just scroll down and show you. Uh, let's see if it shows me the tools here on this particular page. Yeah, here we go. So here are the three tools. There's Spark Post, which I use almost daily. I would say I use Spark Post absolutely the most of the three. And it is available as, uh, by the way, everything I'm going to show you for the most part is going to be in the web browser. So you can use it on any web browser on your computer. But it also is available as a free iOS app and a free Android app. The Android app was long awaited and it did finally come out on Android as well. And Spark Post is for creating those quick, easy, beautiful, template-driven um, social media posts for all the platforms, for Twitter, for um, even YouTube thumbnails, for Instagram, for you know LinkedIn, or whatever else I'm missing, whatever, Facebook whatever other platforms you might be thinking of. Um, then there is Spark Page, which I use Spark Page, I would probably say the second most, and I use Spark Page when I wanna tell a story as a single website, as a single web page, actually. And so this is very, this is, a, this is for creating a one page scrolling story about whatever you wanna create a story about. It could be a business proposal, it could be a trip report, which, um, by the way, internally at Adobe, we use it a lot for trip reports. So if you went off and did some uh, event and you wanted to talk about the event and give the stats and show pictures and do all of that, that's what we use Spark Page for quite a bit for that reason. Um, but as a photographer, I also like to use it to document uh, when I go on location and I do a photo shoot. So if I go to a, a new place, a new location, a new country, a new city, um, and I take lots of pictures and I want to describe the whole event, I use Spark Page for that because it creates a web page that you get a URL for that you can share that URL to anyone and they can just look at it with a web browser. And then last but not least, this is probably the one I don't use nearly as much um, as certainly as the other two. And I probably don't use it that much. Let's be honest. I don't use it at all anymore. <laughs> okay. I'll explain why. Hey, Beetle Jace over on Twitter. What's going on? Uh, and it's funny that uh, Jason Levine just popped in on Twitter because as I'm mentioning Spark Video and I say I don't use it anymore, it's because as a, as a professional tool, I use Premiere Pro. And now that we've got Premiere Rush for editing video on iOS um, and Android and, the web, and, and your computer, 
I'm using those two products way more than I would ever use Spark Video. But Spark Video is great if you don't know anything about editing video. If you just say, hey, I just want to put some images together and some clips from my phone and put together a story, and I don't know anything, I, don't, I just wanted to all do it for me, that's exactly what Spark Video is for. But if you want more control, you actually want to make a real production style video where you're editing, you're making cuts, and you're adding transitions, and you're adding text and, and things like that, that's what Adobe Premiere is for. Premiere, whether it's Premiere Pro or Premiere Rush. So all three are great. Here's the best part. All three are free to use. That's right, and I sound like an infomercial. There is no cost to use Adobe Spark. Now, if you are a paid Creative Cloud member of any plan, then you get more features, you get more things you can do, but even if you never paid Adobe a dime, you can go in and use Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video all day long, every day you want for free. It is absolutely free to use. So with that said, let's dive in and talk about some of the things you can do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, I'm just gonna go to spark.adobe.com, which is where you would get started. Uh, you do want to sign in. So signing in gives you a, quite a few features and you can, I believe, sign in now, not only with an Adobe ID, which you can create for free, you don't have to pay for that either, uh, but I believe you can even sign in with like your social media handles like Facebook and Apple and uh, Google. You can sign in with a social media platform as well. But or just it's just easier. Create an Adobe ID that way. You can use that Adobe ID forever. Um, but having an Adobe ID signing in also means that whatever you create on one platform is available to you to edit and use on other platforms. So if I start something here on the web. I go to my phone, that post is there. If I start something on my phone and go to my iPad, that post is there. If I go to a start a, a Spark page on my iPad, but I want to edit it with a full keyboard on my Mac, that uh, Spark page is there. So signing in really syncs your devices with all the projects that you're going to create. All right, so once I go to Spark, um, one of the things you'll notice is that it's kind of like letting me start with creating a project. So Tell, Terry, tell your story with Spark. Do you want to create something for Instagram, Facebook cover, a photo collage, a presentation, a slideshow? And so these last two would be a web page and a Spark video. And I can just dive in. Here's some of my recent projects if I want to pick up where I left off. And I can, um, I can even go in and say, well, I don't even know much about social media. So I might want to look at some of the blog posts and tips about how to write an effective LinkedIn headline in 2020. So that's fairly new because it's this year. Uh, make bold statements with um, the subliming.jpg style. Okay, now I gotta go read that. I don't know what that is. All right, how entrepreneurs are making their, their side hustles in 2020. So lots of uh, interesting posts right here that you can read about and know more about um, just social media before you dive in. All right, um, let's say I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm starting out from scratch. So the first thing I might wanna do is cre click create a project. And then it's gonna prompt me with, well, what kind of project do you wanna make? So let's say I wanna go make a post for Instagram. So I'm gonna click Instagram. And then it's gonna bring up a blank page. Cause it's saying, I don't know what you wanna do. You can just start bringing stuff over from scratch. Or more importantly, there are templates. So this is what I mean when I meant in my description by even if you don't do graphic design, you've never designed a page in your life, but you can replace things. <laughs> you can replace text and you can replace images with the stuff you wanted to say and the pictures you want to use. Then you can use uh, one of the templates. Now the templates are categorized, so you, you're not just you are scroll, scrolling random templates here. And I see lots of hearts, which means it's almost Valentine's Day. So lots of Valentine's Day templates. But um, let's just say I want, I'm want i creating a business post and I wanted to do, I um, uh, just type the word sale. So I'm having a sale in my business. And then all the sale temp, sales templates come up uh, that I can just quickly peruse and say, oh yeah, I'd love to create a sale that's 
advertising my 30% off or I'm, maybe I'm only giving 20% off, but you can of course change anything. Since I'm a photographer, I kind of like photos in my Spark post. So I, I'm drawn to this one. It's, I can't read everything it says, but it says 20% off. And I notice there's a photo behind it. So I'm liable to click on that one. And then it shows me a bigger one. Oh, it's a sneaker sale, 20% off. And then there's a person wearing sneakers in the background. And then I say, okay, I like that. Um, I'm not selling sneakers. I, I'm not giving 20% off. Um, I'm not doing any of those things, but I like the way it's designed. So that's the point. You're picking something you like um, from a design standpoint. And I missed Venice, sorry, Bobby. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create, and it will grab the template. And if I were having a sneaker sale, and those were the sneakers I wanted to advertise, I can use that image. Any of the images in the Spark post are royalty free for you to use. So you can use them freely. So if you don't have an image of some sneakers and you want to do a sneaker sale, you can use those. All right, but let's say that I am not doing a sneaker sale. I am doing um, I'm, I'm doing a photography sale or a portrait session sale. Let's do that. Portrait session. So I clicked on sneaker sale, brought up the text so I could change it to what I wanted to say. Uh, portrait, portrait, photo session. All right. So click, oh, I thought I was spelling it wrong. I'm missing an R. There we go. Um, so I get my uh, portrait photo session. I click done, and there it is. Now, it put it again in the same font, same color, same size, same style as what was already there. Uh, if I don't want, maybe I want it to be bigger because maybe that's what I really want, want to talk about. Well, you notice it also gave me handles. So I can pick this up, I can make this bigger, I can make it all one line, I can do whatever I want, I can move it around, I can put it wherever I want it to be. And it gives me guides to um, to to um, align it with. Next up, well, I'm not giving 20% off, but let's say I'm gonna do something else. So instead of 20% off, I am going to do, um, I don't know, free eight by 10. Yeah, let's do that, free eight, eight inch, oops. 8 inch by 10 inch um, photo. All right, so let's let's do a free 8 by 10, but I don't want that to be so big, so let's go ahead and make that smaller. All right, great, and again, we can stick with things on the center, but let's say I'm more of a left align kind of guy, so I can click on this and I can say left align. Just all, all my editing tools are over here. So now I can move this over, and I can same thing here. I want that to be left aligned, and now I can start building um, building my thing here. Now, sneaker sale is still here. It's one of the pieces of text left over. Um, if I need it, we already know that I can click on it and change it. But what if I don't need it? Let, let, let's say this is all the text I need. Then I can just delete it. That's the whole point of these being templates. You don't have to stick with what's there. You can use whatever you want, add in whatever you want, move things around, change the colors, change the style, do whatever you want to do. Um, now, if I undo that, let's say I change my mind. Oh yeah, I know what I can use that text for. Um, let's say I want to say um, my website or what, so yeah, let's do uh, Terry White dot photography. That's my website. And we can click done, and that puts that there. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that over to the left as well. Let's make that left align. Okay, so now I got that in place. So the only thing kind of not really what it should be is the photo. So if I click on the photo, all these other times I've been clicking on the little text box or text frames, but if I click on the photo, then it gives me the option to delete the photo. I'm sorry, delete the photo, replace the photo, which is what I wanna do. Um, or edit the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. Now, when I replace it, it comes up with free photos. So, uh, and this would this would be, in my case, this would be misleading if I use one of the free photos that I didn't take as a photographer. So normally <laughs> using a free photo wouldn't be a problem to advertise something or to get people's attention. I use stock all the time, except for when I'm talking about my own photography that's when it wouldn't be a good idea to use stock. Uh, but let's say I was just talking about portraits in general. 
Uh, I can do, do a search for portraits and some portraits come up. And I could go ahead, ooh, some creative ones come up. I can go ahead and click on one of these and bring it in. But again, I wouldn't do that advertising photography. Obviously, obviously I don't want to advertise with someone else's photography. Uh, but you can go ahead and grab a photo as soon as you click on one. Uh, I kind of like that guy there. As soon as you click on it, it will bring it in. And now I can say, oh, well, the text doesn't quite work where it's laid out because it's blocking things that I don't want it to block. So I can move that down. I can move this down. I can get this where I want it to be and kind of get a better image. Okay, so now let's say I do want to use my own photo because this would be misleading using someone else's photo to advertise photography. So let's click on this. Um, let's replace it one more time. And instead of using find free photos, which you can search for anything you want to search for and use freely, I'm going to click the left arrow to get out of this because I want to go ahead and use any one of my other choices. So if I just want to grab a, a photo from my computer, I can upload a photo. Since I use Lightroom to manage my photos, I can go to my Lightroom albums. Uh, so I can see all my Lightroom albums and find a photo that I want to use. So for example, here's one. I see a portrait in there already. I see a couple portraits. So let's say I kind of want to use this one and it will bring that one in. Ooh, I don't like that one. Oh, I was going to say I don't like that one if it's out of focus, but there it is. So now I can say, okay, I got that in there now. It's starting to come together, starting to be what I want. Now there's one thing missing. If this were, you, you got the what it is, portrait photo session, free 8 by 10 You can, of course, add more things to describe it. Uh, now that we got room, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off her chin. Great. And I got my website, and it's, it's ready to go, except doesn't mention me really, it just has a website. And what if I really wanna brand this? Well, I mentioned that this is free to use and everything I just showed just free. You can use anything you want, do anything you want. Except there is one thing you get as a paid member that isn't free. And that is branding. So if you want to use your own branding, your logo, your colors, your fonts, those kinds of things are available to paid Creative Cloud members or paid Spark members. And by the way, Spark to, to use is $9.99 a month. I don't recommend paying $9.99 a month just for Spark. When you can pay $9.99 a month for the photography plan and get to use Spark anyway. So that way you're gonna get Photoshop, Lightroom and Spark. So with that said, um, if you're a paid member of any kind, then you get to use the branding features. Um, now, if you're not a paid member, everything I just showed you, away you go, you would click download in this case, you would get your composite image, add more text if you want to, change the colors, do whatever you want to do, and away you would go. But if you are a brand, if you are a paid member, you then get to add one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click add, and I get to add my logo. So logo is a choice, for me, because I'm signed in with a paid Creative Cloud plan. So there's my logo. I can just click. It brings it in. I can move it wherever I want. I can put it right here on the side. I can make it bigger, smaller. Um, you get the idea. It's my logo. And of course, uh, in that ad, that had multiple logos because you can have multiple logos. You can have multiple things for your branding because maybe you have a logo in black. Maybe you have one in white. Maybe you have one that's got a, a background to it. Maybe you have one that's transparent like this one. So you can have different versions of your logo to use for different things. All right, so with that said, um, the next thing I might wanna do is, um, let's say I really want the free eight by 10 to stand out, to pop, to, to, to have more um, style to it. So I used what was in the template, but I, I, it's not enough. I want something better, but I don't, I don't know how to design. So when you start saying, well, I don't know what to do, <laughs> then that's when you click my favorite option in SparkPost, the style wheel. So when you click the style wheel, you notice, or I click style and it brings up the style wheel and you notice it says suggestions for the thing you have selected. So if I say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to spin the wheel. Take a spin, Terry. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and just start spinning the wheel and it will start changing it randomly to things that might look better. So as I keep turning it, it keeps changing it to other things. 
Now, just if you see something you kind of like, but maybe you don't like the color, maybe you don't like the size, you can adjust anything it's changing. Um, it's not like it's locked in. So if you, you kind of get the idea, oh, I like the free eight by 10 reverse like that, that looks better, but maybe I don't like it all caps. So I could change it to not be all caps. Uh, you can change any aspect of these uh, styles. So as I keep turning, it keeps doing more things. I kind of like that one, but I just don't like the font. Um, I'm just gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. And if, as you keep going, it'll keep changing it. Um, I think it will eventually run out and start repeating, but it will, it will give you what you, uh, it'll give you what you want. So this is one, this is an effect I like a lot. It's the cutout effect. So you're seeing the letters cut out as, as basically it's letting me now, um, show what's, what's behind the photo through the letters. So I kind of like that one to make this one stand out a little bit more because it just, you got lost in the all the text looking the same kind of thing. Now, again, if you want to change something else, you can. So if you want to change the color of that text, maybe you don't want the white, you can get, notice my TW colors, my brand colors are here, or suggested colors, or all colors. So whatever color you like. So now, wh why is it suggesting specific colors? Typically, it will suggest colors based on the rest of the content, like the photo. So you're, you're going to, uh, hang on for a minute here. Okay, so um, as a paid subscriber, Bobby's asking, are you still, are you able to pull stuff out of your library or was that, uh, what you did when you brought in the logo. No, the logo is, is a separate thing that you set up in the branding specific spot of Spark. Um, I know you can pull from Creative Cloud. I just can't remember if you can pull from a library. So give me a minute to look because um, I just don't remember if, you, if libraries were part of the Creative Cloud pulling. I know you can pull from the Creative Cloud folder, but I'm not sure if it, it respects your libraries as well. Uh, but anyway, so I can change that text to whatever color I thought would look better. So again, I kind of like the gray. Don't like that. It's, it's too much. But I do like the gray on that. Okay. Um, I don't think you can change individual colors. So if I wanted to change like P and O to be white and the rest to be gray, then I have to break all that up into separate boxes, which you can do. You can just keep adding more text until you got it looking the way you want. Um, and of course, these are my branded colors that don't work necessarily. Ooh, that one actually does work well here. I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, so now once I'm done, I can click download. But wait, it's square. And that's that's true. Instagram has always been a square format by default. But Instagram stories are not square. They're vertical. They're tall. <gasps> I've done all this work and I want to use this for an Instagram story. Oh no. So I could download the square one to post on my profile, but what if I want one for an Instagram story as well? Well, let me go back to my projects. Notice it's saving, I didn't have to click save. And then I can go in and I can say, you know what, I can edit that one and make it non-square, but I, maybe I wanna keep the square one too. So I can duplicate it and I'm just gonna say um, three eight by 10, um, story. There we go. I can duplicate it. And that will give me the free eight by 10 story as another, um, uh, another one. Now I can edit that one. And once I edit that one, I get the ability to go into two things. I can go into layout to like add more cells for different images or different things, or I can go more importantly to resize. So if I go to resize, then I get all the other template choices. So I get Instagram, which is what we're on, Instagram story, Instagram portrait, Instagram landscape, Facebook, Pinterest, so forth and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Instagram story and it will automatically do the best it can to reformat everything. So it brought the text. It tried to keep everything aligned as best it could. 
uh, the size as best it could. The photo is a, a wide photo, so there's only so much it can do there. Um, but maybe I want to play with that because I could just move her into the middle. I can move this up. I could scale it down. I could do those kinds of things. I can move this over and keep it aligned left and move this over and keep it aligned left and maybe put my logo somewhere else. There we go. So I can do those things or put my logo now that I have room over here. Or I can say, you know what? I still want to see more of the photo wide because you, you can't really tell what the hat looks like now and there's no way for me to scale it down without creating empty space so what i could do um uh, sharon's asking a good question can gradients be added to the color palette i don't believe so i don't think i've ever seen gradients in spark yet you're always adding things uh, but anyway, let's let's fix the, I want to see more of the portrait. Well, then the, one of the easiest ways to do that is to change the layout. So instead of it just being one, um, one um, uh, um, cell, I can scroll down and say, well, if I divide it into two cells like that, then that will give me more of the picture. And then I can just bring this down here. And then make that maybe smaller or wider that way. There we go. And bring that down. Bring that down. And maybe now this would be better in the center. I don't know. Or maybe keep it to the left. I don't know. Let's keep that there. So now i got a better looking Instagram story. I still have the original one for the Instagram post. But i got a better looking story for this. All right. With that said, if I were ready to go now, I could go ahead and click download. Now, um, a couple questions that came up. So one of the questions that came up was about the logo. So let me get to that area of Spark. So I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go back to my projects here so that gets saved. Um, and by the way, I wouldn't download it. I would just go to my phone, launch Spark post, and save it to my camera roll there or share it to Instagram from there. Because... If I download it on my computer, then I got to worry about getting it over to my phone. Since Spark Post is on my phone, it's here. Let me just show it to you. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's see if it's synced yet. Let's switch over to the phone so you guys can see it. There's my phone. And I'm going to go ahead and go into um, Adobe. There's Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video. I'm going to go to Spark Post. Those, that's by the way, this is the brand tab. So these are my branded templates because I'm a paid member. Uh, if I go to my post, there it is already there. If I tap on it and I would now just be able to share this right from my phone. So this is what I meant by there's a benefit to signing in. Don't think we just want you to sign in for the hell of it. You actually get a benefit that whatever you create, wherever you create it is available wherever you create it. <laughs> all right. So, or uh, all the other places where you're signed in, I should say. So now if I want to go ahead and do that, I can do it. Now, the thing I noticed is that, hey, wait, it's missing the style for the free 8x10. It, it got lost when I did the um, style change or the layout change. So I'm going to edit. I can click on that free 8x10. I can scroll over to style and I get my style wheel again. And I can change it to a style that I like like before. Since I don't remember which one it was, I'll just stop on one that I kind of like to make that stand out. So far, I'm not liking any of those, but we'll pick one just for the sake of time. All right, I'll pick that one just for the sake of time. All right, done, and away I go. All right, and again, if I want to change that, hey, I kind of liked it when it was reversed. Um, you can go in and say, like I said, after the fact and say, you know what? I really wish that did have a shape behind it. Um, maybe I want the that shape or that shape. I think that shape's better. Maybe I want to do that. Let's not do that. And there we go. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, banners. There we go. That's better. Okay, whatever you want. All right, so now I got that in place. Um, I'm still not happy with it, but I got that in place, and now I can go ahead and share it. All right, and those are all my options to share, including saving the image to my camera roll, as well as sharing it using the standard iOS sharing. 
or platform sharing, I should call it. Okay. So where, how did I get the brand? So the brand is when you go to your Spark home, where you see your projects, you'll also see my brand. So this is where you're, you're going to create your brand. You can't create your brand on mobile. So like opening up Spark Post on your mobile device won't do it. You got to create your brand on the web once. Once you do it there, it is available to use on your phone. It is available to use on all your devices. You just can't, um, uh, can't create it from scratch on, the, um, on mobile. All right, let me see. I see some people crying. What are you crying about? You can post directly. So uh, the question was, I thought it would let me correct post directly to Vimeo or YouTube. Well, Spark Video is a video product that would let you post directly to those platforms. It just depends on what it is. Spark Post is for images. So why would it let you post to YouTube? It's an image. Uh, so yes, it will let you post directly to the platform that's appropriate for the content you're creating. Uh, what are the size settings for Instagram stories? Posts are four by five, stories are the same? No. Um, and that's the other thing I love about Spark Post is because social media platforms are constantly changing their specs. And when you pick an Instagram story, whatever the spec is for an Instagram story, it's already the right size. So you don't have to worry about what are the dimensions. I couldn't even tell you what they are. I'd have to go look them up. And I don't worry about the dimensions because it's picking the right dimensions for me. So whatever you pick, um, it will let you do it. All right. So anyway, this is where you create your brand. This is where you upload your logos. This is where you upload and create your colors. This is where you, uh, and by the way, if you just upload, um, hang on, I think if you, if you upload your logo, you can get the logo, the colors from your logo is what I was trying to say. And of course you can uh, pick what fonts you use. And now you have the ability to um, add any Adobe fonts um, as well as I think there's even a way somehow to even upload fonts that are not Adobe fonts uh, to do this. Uh, so this is where you create the brand if you are a paid member. If you're not a paid member, this is the only thing I've shown today that you don't get. All right. Um, speaking of YouTube, I'm just going to show you one more thing and then we'll talk um, for a minute about the other two products uh, in the Spark platform. One of the things I discovered, I'm really happy I discovered, is that a lot of times I'm stuck on creating a cool looking YouTube thumbnail for my video. So if I go and search YouTube thumbnail, oh, there it is, I saw it, YouTube thumbnail. Boom, it brings up all the templates for YouTube thumbnails that are the exact size they need to be, uh, that I don't have to worry about. All I gotta do is pick the one I like to start with and then change it to whatever I want it to be. So um, if I want the fashion photography one, I could. If I want the Bali one, I could. Whatever you pick, you're gonna get that exact template and you can change anything about it you want. I've used this one before, the heavy duty travel gear for like a review video. And I just changed it to from travel gear to whatever I was re reviewing and I said review instead of heavy duty. And of course, change the photo. So this is really just, pit and this is another review one I like. This is just really picking the style you like and then changing it to whatever you want. So for example, uh, if I pick this one, create, we'll do just two things real quick. Um, instead of uh, camera, I'm gonna change that to, recently I reviewed the Wacom One uh, display tablet on my YouTube channel. There it is, Wacom One. And then I would go ahead and replace the photo with a photo from my computer. Um, if I go out to my desktop where the Wacom One review is, I created some images for that. I think this is the one. I could use that one. And I can just upload that image in the background and it will change that image. And I'm just going to say, make that image, make that image bigger. There we go. So that it cuts off. I don't want that lower third on the bottom of it. There we go. Uh, and then move it down. Perfect. So that's just that easy to create that thumbnail. And of course you get, uh, one of the other things I failed to mention is you get icons now. Uh, so icons allow me to literally get thousands of choices of icons. So if I type in the word tablet, I'm sure I'm going to get some tablet choices there um, to, to pick from. There's one that actually looks like a graphics tablet and there I am. 
So I would export this out now. And when I upload my YouTube video, there we go. That would be my YouTube thumbnail to go. What about, how about the security of Spark? Securing what? What is it you want to secure? So meaning your login is secure as well as your Adobe ID is. I'm not sure what else it would be that you would be securing. Um, the other thing, uh, since this is for business users, the other thing I want to mention is that now brand new in Spark, if I go back to my projects, um, you have the ability for the first time now to invite others to collaborate. So since business people are typically collaborating with other business people in their corporation and their business and their marketing department and their whatever, you can invite people to your Spark project so they can not only look at it, but make changes to it, edit it, proofread it, whatever it is that that person needs to do, and even share it themselves. So you also have the ability to um, business users and anyone else for that matter, have the ability now to invite people to your Spark projects. All right. So uh, I always run out of time before I show these things. So I'm just going to quickly talk about them. Uh, create a, um, not a branded graphic web page. So I create a web page. This is a Spark page. And like I said, Spark page is all about um, your uh, telling your story with a web page. So the first thing it prompts me with is what is the title of your story? Um, I'm going to say my uh, European vacation. All right, let's say that was it. You're going to add a subtitle, like I usually for my subtitle. Hang on, there we go. I usually just add my name. Then it wants uh, you can add a photo to the background of this, and again, upload a photo. Use stock or use stock if you want. Um, use your uh, your photos, obviously. And let me go to demo files. Actually, that demo files. Actually, no. You know what? Cancel that. I do want to use uh, cancel. I do want to use uh, Lightroom because Lightroom has my albums in it. All right, so let's go to um, Demo and World Traveler. And I don't know, pick one. Uh, let's see, we're talking about Europe. So this is the London Eye, that's London Tower Bridge. So let's do London Eye. All right, and then we scroll down and keep writing. So now when you scroll down, next thing to ask you is, what do you want next? What do you want after the photo? You want another photo? You want text? You want a button? You want a video? You want a photo grid to put multiple photos in? You want a slideshow? You want a uh, split layout, which is fairly new. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I want some text. And then you would type your text, paste your text in, get your text in there, format your text any way you want. Uh, on July... 4th, 2019, I went on an amazing trip. Okay, whatever. And then, of course, you can format that text to be a headline or to be bigger. And, of course, it's picking up the style and all of that from this template, uh, which you can also change the theme of to whatever you want. So it's using my brand. You can also pick some of the ones that are um, built in. So like, if I like Baldwin, I can pick Baldwin. And then everything changes to that. If I like Chic, I can pick that. Teresa, I can pick that one. Vintage, I can pick that one. And it kind of even filtered the photo and everything for me. Whimsy. So these are all um, themes that you can use. Crisp is probably the one I use the most. And then just keep going. So it's always add one of these things. Add one of these things until you're finished telling your story. You want to add more photos? Add more photos. Want to add more text? Add more text. Want to add a button where they can click and go to something you're talking about? Add a button. So that's it. Once you're done with this, you can, uh, this is going to be a very short story, <laughs> but here, let's add one more thing. Let's add a button. Um, see more on my website. Or see more in my portfolio. Let's do that. And then I would give the URL to that portfolio. There we go. 
and save. And then that would be a button. So now if I was ready to publish this, which I'm not, but if I were, I could preview it first to see what the experience would look like. It's gonna be a very short scrolling site, that's it. it. Puts my logo at the bottom for me if I want. I can always take that off if I don't. There's the link that will take you to my website. That works, great, it's ready to go. So I can get out of the preview and then I can say share this and um, publish and share a link. So when I do that, it's going to create a link for it. I can pick a category if I want uh, others to be able to see it uh, that I don't give a link to. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and say create the link. It will generate a unique link to your web page for you to share with whomever you want. And it even gives you the sharing capabilities right here. You just copy it. And people always ask me this, well, what if I want to embed it on my own site? Let's say I have a blog and I just want to embed this on my blog. You get the embed code as well, all free. So if I go ahead and copy that link, now I can share that link with tens of thousands of people to uh, go look at that page. And even after it's shared, you can go in and keep editing. So I've done that too. Like I've caught typos, I've forgot to add a picture, and I've gone ahead and added things after the fact even though uh, it had already been published and already been shared. So sharing doesn't mean you can't finish or keep finish it or keep working on it. All right, last but not least, um, Spark, let's go back home. You can also create a slideshow type video. So it's asking me now that we're creating a Spark video, it's asking me, well, well what is it about, where's your story start, what is it? Um, uh, let's say I want to do a, a, a review of the, uh, the tablet that I did the other day. So Wacom One Review. All right, next. And it's asking me, okay, well, what, what template do you want? Are you promoting an idea, telling what happened, a hero's journey, show and tell, so forth and so on. So in all of these, you can see our videos. These are animated or videos showing me what, the, what it could look like. So let's say I pick that one. Then it's asking me next, um, same kinds of things. What do you want to add to this? So do you want to add a video? Do you want to add text? Do you want to add photo? Do you want to add icon? So forth and so on. So if you want to tell the story a little bit with text first, you could do that. Um, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I received the Wacom one for review. There we go. And um, you can also narrate the slides. So if I click the button, it will bring up my microphone so I can narrate. I can tell you about this instead of you just reading it. Um, then I can go to the next one. So basically it's like creating a PowerPoint or keynote presentation that's going to ultimately be a video when you're done. And of course you can add video since this will be a video when you're done. So I can go in and say that I wanna add um, the finished video here. I don't know if I should have done that because I don't know how long it's going to take. Oh, this is pretty quick. Okay, got it. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Apparently, your video can only be so long at a time because these are slides. So, short videos. So, 30 seconds each to make your video. So, in this case, the first 30 seconds will be there. Save that. Saving the clip. And, um, again, I probably shouldn't have done that because that's a big video. It's going to take forever to upload. Okay. So we're gonna leave it, on, oh, it's going quick. We're gonna leave it there. The next thing you would do is keep telling the story, adding more text, photos, videos, text, photos, videos, until you're done. And then at the end of the process, just like post and page, you share out the video. So you can then put the video up on YouTube, put the video on Vimeo, uh, share the video wherever you wanna share it to, Facebook, Instagram, wherever it is because as long as it meets the length requirements of those platforms, meaning the min or the maximum, you're fine. Uh, you can create a thumbnail with Spark uh, No, I create a thumbnail with Spark post actually. Uh, but anyway, it's showing me some other choices here. I could download the video when I'm done, share the video, get a link for it if I wanna host it with Adobe. I can play the video, play the whole story. Two weeks ago, I received the Walk of One for review. And then it goes to that and starts showing the video with audio. I'm hearing it in the background. And then it's going to go to the next slide, next slide, next slide. So um, that's Spark. So Spark Post for social media post. I use it every single day, just about. Spark Page for telling your, pay, your, your 
story with a long, either a short or very long web page, which I've got some of those out there as well. And of course, Spark Video, if you just want a quick, easy way to tell your story with motion video and audio. And by the way, you don't have to necessarily, you don't have to have video in your Spark Video. You can just use slides and audio. So you can, and yes, you can, you, question is, can I rename the link? No, you can't. The link is the link um, that Adobe gives you. You can create a bit.ly for it. You can, so you can make it something else, but you can't change the link, so to speak, uh, to what you want it to be, like your own domain or anything like that. It generates a generic link that is for your project. Um, other than having a bit.ly or embedding it on your website, that would be the only other options. All right, so great questions. Um, can you share a Spark post with someone to prove free without them having an Adobe CC? No, uh, you're, you're. Um, yes, you can as long as they have an Adobe ID to sign in with Spark. So, because uh, remember, you didn't have to have an Adobe ID or a CC to create the post. So, sharing is not paid either. So, two people that never paid can share with each other. The only pro only problem that would that would present is if a branded person tried to share to a non-branded person, then that might create an issue that the non-branded person can't edit the branded content with the logos and all that stuff in it. But you're talking about two, two free people or a free person or a non-branded person to a free person, no problem. Um, and so, yes, you can collaborate with people that aren't Creative Cloud members for proofreading. All right, cool. Dr. Man, Dr. Man, hello. All right, with that said, we went way over our time, but I think we got a lot done today and I got through more of what I would normally do with this stuff than I would do before. So there's my video, by the way, that once I save that, it will be available on all my platforms. All the stuff I did today is there. The recent projects, create, add more. Go sign in and use Spark. If you're on a mobile device, which I'm betting most of you are, download spark post for your phones and your tablets if you're on ios you can download spark page and spark video as well on your ios devices for free and if you don't have a device you can just use it on a web browser just like i did for most of this today all right i'm glad you guys had fun Got something out of it and this was great thanks mike um you're welcome, Dr. Mann. And with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.